Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Ben-Noon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Greetings to all of those that are watching via live stream. I already got to talk to everybody on live stream just a little bit here, just for a second coming in. And, um, and for those of you that are catching this broadcast on YouTube, I encourage you, join up with us on live stream. We're hoping to step up the live stream a notch where it will also be able to be aired on our website. Uh, otherwise, I think you just have to get your little free account on live stream to be able to view this. Uh, you can look up Stephen Denoon, D-E-N-O-O-N, to catch our, is our news that runs live. It will be running five days a week. Uh, Sometimes six days a week. Normally, we won't run it on Shabbat uh, the night, uh, on Friday evening because of Shabbat, getting ready for Shabbat, and and also on the Sabbath as well. Uh, but other than that, Sunday, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we will be running live uh, quite quite frequently. Anyway, I wished I had some good news to report today, and I know that there. Uh, I, I'm really going to make it a point to try to find some good news to report. Uh, I did post on uh, Israeli News Live on our Facebook page a, a nice little thing I saw. I uh, forget exactly where I saw it at. We posted on our Facebook page. It was like 25 photos of uh, showing that humanity is still, uh, still alive and well. And it's pictures of different things of kindness that people do for one another. I just really enjoyed seeing something nice rather than all the negative constantly. Anyway, speaking of negative, Arut Shiva, Israel National News, is reporting that the uh, P5 plus one powers have caved in to Iran's demands in regards to, um, let me just make sure I got this muted out over here, guys, sorry about that, but, uh, but they gave in to the, to the demands of Iran. There will be no nuclear inspections. They just wanted to get this deal signed. They don't really care uh, about Israel's safety whatsoever. I guess this is really just for, 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 for being able to uh, sell arms or something, uh, to be able to have more arm deals, to arm Iran better so that they can wipe Israel out. That must really be the idea behind uh, this ignorance of a deal. Let me read to you, though, what uh, Israel National News is saying. It says the uh, P5 plus one countries led by the United States under Barack Obama have caved in to Iran's demands and will not insist on inspection of nuclear installation as part of a deal on Iran's nuclear weapons program. That was reported by Channel One on Sunday. Um, very sad indeed. In fact, you know, the United States, uh, just mentioned this real quick, passed a law, Obama passed a law, that uh, reporters cannot speak against the president. I'd like to get more clarification on that. I saw a brief clip on that. Um, and uh, not, not good, but nonetheless, um, he is definitely way off track. I, I actually have a nickname for uh, the president of the United States. Uh, but uh, we'll skip that right now. Maybe one day I'll publish what I think. Uh, the channel's Arab Affairs correspondent reported that the June uh, 30th Tuesday night deadline for the talks has been set back to an unspecified date, but the negotiations are good-natured, and the feeling is that the deal is nearly done. Well, of course. Iran gets anything they want. It's easy to do a deal. It's easy to do a deal when Iran can call all the shots. I guess John Kerry just needs a feather in his cap to say that he did a deal with Iran for the United States and it'll make Barack Obama look better. Maybe they need a legacy. That's all presidencies seem to be about nowadays. Just what kind of legacy you can leave. Forget, forget safety and security. Forget um, the, the, the needs of people that really matter. That's what really politics should be about. Not about your legacy, but about what you can do to change the lives for other people. And you know, I'm not against the Arab people in Iran if they're interested in um, uh, mercy and kindness and, and mutual fellowship there. Uh, you know, but, uh, but, but when you have the radical regime that Iran has to begin with that has clearly said they want to wipe Israel off of the map, this is what I'm against. 
Uh, I am in support of the Iranian uh, people, though, that are believers in Yahshua as their Messiah. I'm in support of them. In fact, very much support of them because they're the ones dying at the hands of uh, the, the different, the different, the, the regime there, as well as ISIS that's terrorizing the country at this point. But anyway, uh, Zarif's departure followed, it says in the report here, followed a week, a weekend of talks with foreign ministers from the UK, France, Germany, and Russia. Uh, who joined the talks over the weekend before returning to their capitals. The lead Western negotiator, the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, is expected to remain in Europe to await Zarif's return. Uh, Iran officials suggested Zarif would uh, only be away for 24 hours, but that would leave only a day, uh, a day to meet the 30 June deadline. Western officials said they were expecting to stay at least a couple of days past that target date. I'm sure they're going to get the deal. I'm sure they will. They, you know, they really don't give a, a flip what Israel has to say about it. And, and then quite frankly, it concerns me the, the, um, in Israel as well, because the political climate in Israel, um, well, I tell you what, you'll just, uh, if you get a chance, uh, there's another video that will be have coming out on YouTube very soon. Uh, I'll be mentioning another interesting prophetic passage that I found in regards to uh, the Prime Minister of Israel. I actually found a prophetic passage about Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, as well as another passage, another prophetic passage about uh, Pope Francis. So I'll be doing another video later tonight on that, so hopefully you'll catch that on YouTube. Uh, if it doesn't get posted tonight, it will be up in the morning because I will be recording that later tonight. Anyway, let's continue on. Another very uh, shocking news article that I picked up off of RT News. RT News uh, is reporting, uh, they actually have footage. You can see this on Israeli News Live on our Facebook page of Israeli News Live. I've posted this article from RT News there. They have caught uh, two newsreel film clips that have been brought in. One was by a, uh, a Ukrainian or a Russian news agency that have filmed uh, what is believed to be American troops in Maripol, uh, Ukraine. This is where a battle just was, was going on recently. Let me read to you what the article says here. Armed people in uniform speaking fluent English with no accent have been spotted in Maripol in the aftermath of the rocket hit fueling allegation that foreign private military contractors are serving among Ukrainian troops. The port city in eastern Ukraine under Kiev's control saw a surge of violence on Saturday when several rockets hit the residential area in the east of the city, reportedly killing 30 civilians. Numerous videos from the scene showed destruction in the aftermath of the attack for which local militia and Ukraine troops blamed each other. Uh, but among footage shot in Maripol, there are some videos showing armed men in military uniform who speak in uh, speak English fluently. One video uploaded on YouTube is apparently raw footage of a local news channel, MSN, in Maripol, uh, that actually filmed this. Now, what's kind of funny is, um, uh, let, let me go ahead and read a little bit more here. The man holds a, car a carabine, a car, excuse me, a carbine in his hand and is wearing a tactical vest. That's on the first video you'll see. As the correspondent points her microphone with the request to comment, the man covers his face with the other hand and says in an American or Canadian accent, out of my face, out of my face. Now, I have listened to this, and, and I use Bose has headphones so I can get some clarity there. And, uh, you know, the Russian people may not be as good as what we can in, in here in America listening to the accent there, but he clearly has a very much more of a, like a, a, a North United States type of accent. He does not have... He does not have an English accent from Britain, neither Australia. Uh, they say Canadian, possibly. No, my face, I don't believe it's Canadian face, either. I'm very, very well understand those type of accents, but clearly it seems to be an American. Now, the second video footage is also another uh, English-speaking pair of people there. Now, they do tend to have an accent there. It could be an English accent. I'm not really sure on that one there. But, uh, but the first guy is definitely an American. And, of course, the carbine does show that he is actually carrying weapons that would be used like local uh, soldiers, like the Ukrainians would be using. 
but these are men that are extremely well trained. Now RT believes that these are actually military contractors that are being brought in and of course the United States could easily stop anything like that but the US is allowing this because they know the Ukraine soldiers need help and so they've got men, no doubt former very professional soldiers that are, that are going in there to do this. Uh, these are people that are trained to kill, no doubt about it. Uh, another article I wanted to share with you as well and I, and I really, this article here I think is very important to bring to your attention uh, because I had a, a, I believe, I'm sure it was a Russian man that had commented on uh, the news that we did recently about the U.S. Uh, coming, in, excuse me, Russia uh, willing to back Texas in seceding from the Union. Now, of course, we are not for uh, any state to secede from the United States. The United States is stronger if it stays together. I, I, I do believe this 100%. You know, the problem in the United States, kind of like what Jeb Bush says, he says that Russia is a great people and a great country. He's just against President Putin. And I'm not against President Putin by no means. I think that President Putin, like any other politi politician, has his faults, has problems, has issues. But I do believe he's trying to protect the Russian-speaking people in eastern Ukraine as well as in um, uh, Crimea. And I, I, I think he has a right to do that. And the whole world has come against this man. And you know, some people have accused me of being a supporter of Russia in this. I'm a supporter of what's right and what's wrong. And the, it is a clear fact that the US toppled the Ukrainian government. And, and in return, they have come in uh, and they have taken and uh, put a neo-Nazi regime in place. And this is why innocent people are being murdered in eastern Ukraine. Um, but anyway, when I did the report the other day, uh, the report that I was seeing on, on the news that I was actually seeing going on is that it looked like that Russia may be willing to, to, to go ahead and, and go to war. Because these were the reports that we were seeing that were being posted on different news links and that's what I shared with the people. And one person said that this was not correct, that Russia has always looked for diplomacy. And I agree with that. Uh, President Putin has always looked for a diplomatic way to resolve the crisis in Ukraine uh, as well as trying to resolve this issue of all the sanctions put against him. But clearly, the Barack Obama administration is not allowing uh, Germany nor France to back out of this NATO agreement to sanction uh, Russia. There are many countries, though, that do not want to see Russia sanctioned, including Slovakia and the Czech Republic are, are two of those, and there's been others that have voiced a, uh, opposition against the sanctions against Russia, because it is hurting these countries not to be able to do business with Russia. But nonetheless, I do not believe that even the Barack Obama administration is really the key problem in all of this as far as the United States, as much as it is the Vatican who is determined to grab, to do a land grab as much as they possibly can to get world dominance for the new world order. There again, as we've stated before though, this could be that all parties involved, including President uh, Putin, this may be just a staged event anyway. As we've said before, there are border crossings popping up in the former Soviet, uh, on the border of so former Soviet states uh, bordering Europe. So, is it kind of like what's going on in Israel? We see one thing, but another thing is going on altogether. But let me bring this article out again. RT News pr uh, published this as well. Russia has no aggressive plans, will always prefer political settlement. That's according to Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. And, and I, we've seen this time and time again. Of course, we see the same thing even from Barack Obama, saying that they want a political settlement. But needless to say, on the U.S.'s side, we have watched the tanks and troops and everything else pour into the former Soviet states. Now, there, as far as from the U.S. side, they say that this needs to be done in order to protect the former Soviet states from Russian aggression. 
I, I don't even know sometimes where to go with that. But let me go ahead and read this article here. Russia is not threatening anyone, according to what uh, Vladimir Putin is saying, anyone, and will always prefer peaceful solution to international conflict. Ple President Vladimir Putin has said, adding that military forces are still important as a guarantee of national sovereignty. We are not threatening anyone and seek to resolve all conflict situations throughout political means with respect towards the international law and other national interests. He stated on Thursday in his speech before graduates of military uh, ac ac academies, Putin emphasized in his speech that Russia was an open country ready to cooperate with any nation on equal conditions. The Russian leader added that he saw many challenges to the country, including some of the immediate vicinity of Russia's borders, and these challenges were the main reason the country needed strong, modern, and adequately armed military force, he said. Uh, this is a guarantee of Russia's sovereignty and territorial integrity, a guarantee of peaceful and calm life of millions of our uh, compatriots. Putin said, promising that the authorities will continue the support of the military and complete the ongoing major reform of the forces. The president mentioned uh, the strategic nuclear forces and space forces as a priority for active development. He also reminded the officers that the military were regularly receiving newest weapon, weaponry developed by Russians, by Russia's specialists, examples of which we recently presented uh, uh, at the Army 2015 exhibition. Now you can read the rest of the article on our uh, Israeli News uh, Facebook page, Israeli News Live that is, and, uh, and continue on from there. But um, I, I'm just really concerned as I'm watching the, the events that are, that, are, that are unfolding. And I, I've mentioned to several, uh, uh, in fact, last time I mentioned to people that a, a good documentary to watch is The Way Home uh, that, that Russia put together regarding Crimea and what happened there. It gives, you an, it gives you an alternative perspective of the events that are transpiring in Eastern Europe. And, uh, and, and I really strongly encourage that, that people were to watch this because I'm trying to be neutral in this particular conflict watching uh, the situation unfold. I, I was born an American. I love the United States with all my heart. It is a Christian nation founded on Christian principles. Although unfortunately, as we have seen recently in the news, uh, with the United States Supreme Court in support of gay marriage, we, we have seen that the United States has officially turned to uh, a government of that of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know exactly what happened uh, in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, so w people might say that there is freedom, but the nation is on a downcline. And we cannot expect anything but the judgment of Almighty God. I mean, the United States totally turned against Israel and could care less about the Israeli people anymore. And it's sad to say that. It's sad to see this situation as it is. And now the moral decay of the country is going down. And by the way, let me just say this. You think you have freedom in this country, but you don't. And this is what I want to say in closing in this broadcast here. And those of you that are on the live stream, if you'd like, I'll take some of your questions in just a moment here at the end of the news here for the YouTube channel. But I want to just say this here. Let me show you how your freedom is being taken from you as American citizens. The, the United States was founded on, on the fundamentals of Christianity. The, founding fathers that came here. And I, and I know that a lot of people say it was Masons, Jesuits, etc. We know that the Jesuits overtook the country. That's, that was clear. And, and when Ronald Reagan was president, that was our first sign uh, that, that this country was taken over. But there still was a lot of good people that came in the early years of this country. They wanted freedom of religion, wanted to be away from Catholicism, and even the early founding fathers said, never let the Pope of Rome step foot in this country. The day it does, this country will go downhill. Now we see it's going downhill. Uh, you see this, the law being passed for gay marriage, and the seriousness of this is, when I say that your freedom is being taken away, if you are a minister of a church who has a 501c nonprofit status, and a gay couple were to come into your church to want to be married, legally you have to marry them. 
There is no freedom of religion in this particular case here. And if you do not do so, you could lose your status as a 501c3 organization. You could be shut down by the government. All kinds of things could come against you. I'm concerned that this is what you're going to see happen in the very near future. Uh, I believe that there will be, especially for churches that the government would like to see shut down, you're going to be set up because they're going to send in couples intentionally just so they can shut you down. If they shut you down, the government then has a right to declare that you owe taxes for everything that your organization ever got for free from the very beginning of inception of your 501c corporation. This is why we chose not to be a 501c. You have to pay your taxes in order to do that. But did not even Jesus say, Yeshua that is, he said to Peter, Go get, go, there's a fish. Get the coin out of the fish's mouth and bring the coin here and we'll pay our taxes. It's harder to do that. Believe me, it is. It is harder. But it's the wiser way. And I feel for those ministers, because many ministers just, they, they went into being a 501c3. We, we would have nearly went into it. My wife's research is really what protected us. But I feel for my brothers and sisters that are in ministry, that are faced with something like this that could happen to them. And it's a good way that the government could do that if they don't like what you're saying in the first place. If you are trying to stand for truth, now they have a way to shut you down. We'll be praying for you. Anyway, for those of you on YouTube, God bless you. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.